collective also just means there are a lot more applicants than we have spaces available. So this year, um, we had about 30,000 students apply for our freshman class of 1,600. That's a lot of students applying for a small number of spaces. <coughs> and we are reviewing all of those applications, you know, individually, one by one. We're looking at them um, in a comprehensive manner, not just raw testing or GPAs, but we're really digging into the type of program that the student has taken. So it's important when you're thinking about highly selective institutions and that level of selectivity, the academics that go along with it. So as we're talking about how to prepare and what you should be thinking about, what students should be thinking right now is just preparing themselves academically for college in general and then the types of schools that they may be putting on their, their list. So as juniors, we're telling all junior students, think about what interests you, think about your favorite courses, but also think about the most competitive courses that you can handle your senior year. Okay, so you've been preparing all along, students have been preparing all along for their senior year. Each year you're taking a more rigorous program, but the senior year should be absolutely the toughest. Okay, we want students to be able to make that transition to, high, uh, to the freshman level college work. And the stronger the courses, the more prepared they are taking that level of rigor, the easier that transition will be. So we recommend for highly selective schools that you take the most challenging program you can handle. Don't overload yourself thinking, just because my friend is taking three AP courses or four AP courses, I need to take five. You know, if you can't handle that, don't do it. What can you handle? What can you successfully complete um, in that senior year? So we're looking at the rigor of your program. We're looking at preparation. We're going to be looking at grades from the freshman year through the senior year. And again, each year should be a little bit better to bit better. The junior and senior year are really going to be key. Um, senior program is important, junior year grades are important, and hopefully we'll see progress along the way. Um, you know, again, for highly selective schools, we'll want to see really, really strong grades. And if you had a bad Freshman year, you know, oftentimes we look at look at that first year as a transition year from middle school to high school. Okay, sophomore year we should see some leveling out and improvement. Hopefully, we'll see an, in, an incline in terms of grades and rigor. Sometimes GPA levels go up and down by semester, but again, the junior year and the senior year are very important for students in the room. Senior year counts. Okay, don't let anyone tell you senior year doesn't count. It counts in terms of what courses you choose and it counts in terms of your grades from the beginning to the end. And especially I emphasize till the end. Even after admissions is done and students think, wow, okay, I can celebrate now, I can sort of relax a little bit. No, senior year counts, those last grades count because again, we want your freshman year in college to be you're going to be making friends, you're going, to have, you're going to have a lot on your mind, you're adjusting to a new environment, you want to be ready academically. So that's what we're really focused on is the academic preparation. So along with program, standardized testing comes along. Usually in the junior year you're taking your, your uh, PSATs, you're taking your SAT maybe one time or the ACT, and you get your scores back and you're thinking, okay, these look but I could do better, I could do better than that. So if your son or sons are thinking that too, they're preparing, you know, they're still studying, they're still learning. Senior year, they may take that exam again. Most schools now have what we call the super score. It's one big <coughs> score out there in the sky. We take, for the SAT, we will look at how many times a student has taken the SAT, and we will take the different subsections critical reading, there's a writing, and there's a math score. We will take each of those components from different test dates and pull the strongest scores and combine them for 
our super score combined score. The same is true for the ACT. <coughs> some schools will use the strongest composite score. Some uh, schools will use the actual um, subjects within that and take the strongest subjects within the ACT, combine it for your super score composite score. Okay. So it's worth taking the SAT or the ACT more than once um, if the schools are super scoring. I also recommend, you know, put your best foot forward. If you're taking the SAT and you're taking the ACT and you notice, wow, I'm really doing much better on the ACT over the SAT, or I'm doing much better on the SAT over the ACT, instead of trying to fight that and think, okay, I'm going to study and try to focus and get my scores up to a certain level um, for both, you might want to focus on one track. You know, if, you, if you see a huge disparity between scores, don't fight it. Just start to study them for the one that you're doing the best in. And focus on that, and you can continue on that track. Sometimes those two tests are very different, and they look different. Students may perform differently. Sometimes they look the same to you, great. If there's a difference, I would just go ahead and put your best foot forward, focusing on the strongest test. So we're looking at the ACT or SAT. We're combining that with the academic rigor program and grades of the school. That's going to be your academic profile that you're presenting, or the student is presenting to the university. From there, the other components will be things like extracurricular activities, um, how students are spending time outside the classroom. Where is their commitment? Is it to community service? Is it to sports? Is it to music? Is it to art? What is it that really makes them happy? What is it that they love to do when they're not studying? We're looking for those components, and as I said, not necessarily always just going to be a well-rounded student, but you're looking for a well-rounded class of people. You want interesting people to sit next to each other to spark good discussion. So focus on, for students, focus on the things that you love, focus on that commitment, you know, and then try to really dig deep so that by the time you're a senior, you know, perhaps you hold a leadership position or you've had a very serious commitment all the way through in terms of time well spent. So make those things shine. Don't make admissions officers dig deep in a long list of activities. You know, we just, we don't have time to look at huge resumes. Make it easy for us. Put the top three at the very top, you know, and tell us, I love to play football. I love to play the clarinet. Community service is my thing. I'm a debater. I like to write. I write for the newspaper. I'm in the theater. I'm the lead. Brag about yourself. Make it easy for us to know when we're talking about you, this is where you're going to shine. So that's important to us too, how you spend your time outside the classroom. The other components of the application will be recommendations in the essay. Now the essay, this is again where parents have to let go a little bit because your sons are going to be writing their own essays. <laughs> and, you know, there are some new questions with the common application, but I think there's something that will fit every person in terms of interest or how they want to express themselves. So for students, again, think about what is it that I can tell a college about me? What is unique to me? Uh, however I tell that story. And essay doesn't, there are no magic bullet topics. You know, it's really how you tell your story. You could have a community service, pro you could be on a community service project and have a very different experience. <coughs> you might meet somebody and tell a story about who you met. They may have met a different person and tell that story. So you're unique in that way. Um, talk about things that you know things that you like. That way the natural voice will come out in the essay. And that's important for us as we review those, um, that piece of that information. And, and finally, it's really the recommendations. The recommendations will tell a story about performance in the classroom. We have a teacher recommendation and a counselor recommendation. The teacher recommendation puts things into context within one particular class. 
nobody should have a bad teacher recommendation because you get to choose who writes that rap. So ask teachers that like you. You know, students, ask teachers that like you, that know you well, that will have the time. For parents, remind them to stick to deadlines. Don't ask teachers right before deadline. Give them a lot of time to think about you as a person, to write that good recommendation. They will tell us about your performance in class. They will tell us about your strengths. They will talk about any leadership um, that you've exhibited in that class and how you get along well with your peers. That's what comes out of the teacher recommendation. The counselor recommendation puts a student within the context of their school. How has the student gotten involved in the community? How have they performed given the opportunities here at SLU? You know, what have they taken advantage of? How have they grown? How has, has that counselor seen that growth through the four years? And what do they imagine and project that student doing on a college campus? So those recommendations are really valuable. So I think that your conferences, the time that your son spends with your counselor is really valuable time get to know each other. And the time that you spend with the counselor also is very valuable because some of the things that your sons may not say, you will say. You know, sometimes it's harder for a person to talk about themselves, but it's easy for a parent to talk about their children and to talk about strength. And so you can fill in gaps in that way as well and be part of that process. So that's just a little bit of the overview. Um, and again, we'll be available later to take questions. Thank you, Julie.